Well, welcome everybody. Good morning. My name is Veronica McKillop and I'm the founder of the UK IPv6 Council. I'm really pleased that you made the time and you actually came here uh, for our meeting. We've got lots of people, we've got very interesting presentations, all is prepared here for you to learn about IPv6 and things that people actually do in their deployments. Let's see whether this works. Yes. So one very important thing, in order to be able to release the video recordings of these presentations, we need you to be aware that everything is being recorded and will be published on our website and our YouTube channel. So the day is really busy. Uh, probably you have registered at the very beginning when we opened the registrations and we really didn't have the full agenda, but you will see we've got a fantastic lineup of people and presentations. The morning is going to be um, kind of in like a swifter pace, where you can see we've got lots of shorter presentations. Uh, we, after the opening, we'll have Jeffrey from Cisco speaking about the business case of IPv6. And those of you who have deployed IPv6 or those who are working on deploying IPv6 know that's actually the first question your managers ask. You know, what is the business case? Why do we need to do it? What is the reason for prioritization of IPv6 deployment? So Jeffrey, he will share some of his insights from dealing with various customers. Then we've got two talks from uh, Altnet, or from smaller ISPs, uh, Charlie from Tube and Dave from Plusnet. Uh, and after that, we will look more into what's happening at the ITF level. What is the V6 uh, group doing there? You know, there are two different groups. Uh, and uh, Tom, after that, he will talk about something that is quite new. I think it's quite recent. I don't see Tom. Yeah, about Snack. Uh, and in the end, uh, for, the, for this morning session, we will just complete with the awards. We've got two awards this year. It's not as many as last year. If you've been here with us in the previous year, we had actually quite a few companies. This year, so we've got two awards. And I hope that those companies that are receiving it actually joined us today. After that, we will have a lunch, plenty of opportunities to speak. Uh, and in the afternoon, we will settle into about half an hour long presentation. So very excited to have Ben from Vague Global talking about the work they are doing in the European Parliament. Uh, then Andy will talk about how to connect I, uh, IPv6 islands with your enterprise when your WAN operator is uh, basically blackmailing you for IPv6 deployment. After that, we will have Nick from Meta talking about the work they are doing about removing V4 from their infrastructure addressing and uh, pardon, from, from the Meta Edge Network. And we will conclude with a remote presentation uh, from Chris, where he's gonna talk about software development and the benefits of V6. Last year, you might remember, guys, there was a quite heated debate. Uh, I think it was during the 10 years IPv6 world launch anniversary panel about how software people are resistant to supporting IPv6. So you will actually notice there is probably gonna be Quite a, uh, quite a bit mentioned about software throughout the day. And also what's very interesting, if you look at the whole agenda, the flow is kind of from the business case, dual stack, how to remove V4, and we are moving to this like ultimate goal, which is V6 only. And in the third part of this day, we will have Bruno from the Hepix group in CERN talking how they are working towards V6 only in their data center. So last year we had Dave talking about how they're actually enabling that all the experiments that are run in CERN are sending the data between the various locations on V6 only. So you will hear some more details how they are advancing that even further. And then this is something that Jen, she's actually gonna follow nicely on to what we had at our enterprise workshop in spring, where Andre from RIPE was talking about the, uh, the option 108 and how basically to make your network IPv6 mostly. So this kind of a step moving towards like removing V4 from your network, but one you still have to run it. So Jen, she's one of the responsible people, I would say in ITF. And uh, so she's actually gonna talk about what she's doing in Google in their internal network uh, about turning off V4. And the final part of the day uh, will be 
will be two lightning talks where Graham will talk about IoT and matter. Probably some people have heard about the standard, about the initiative within the industry that the industry took up on themselves. And then uh, uh, we will conclude with an interesting uh, customer case where Pete uh, from Mythic Beast is going to tell us that customers do ask for IPv6. So the myth that there is no customer demand is uh, not true anymore. I would like to also say that at the end of the day, we usually go for a drink after the event. So there's the Weeds Heath, uh, people who have been here last year with us. And in 2019, you know, it's just basically you exit outside the Ratpon Square and the, uh, the venue is, I think, it's kind of diagonally on your left. So you'll find it, uh, find it just right there. I need to demonstrate how our q and is going to work, so you've got the catch box. <laughs> so I need uh, some, somebody's going to cooperate him. No, no, you need to say something to it. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, that works. One, two, three. <laughs> this is basically your traveling microphone, and uh, I think people who have been here last year, they have seen this before. So it's a kind of a fun way how to ask questions. For those who haven't seen the digital signage uh, before, uh, this is your uh, Wi-Fi access for the day, uh, which is offered here by Meta. And also, I was informed that there are no fire alarms scheduled, so in case we hear something that sounds like a fire alarm, we need to exit in an orderly way, the way we've came. I think that's the probably, or follow the green signs. And I definitely want to say big thanks to Meta and uh, Nick Chettle and his team for hosting us because, uh, you know, the UK IPv6 Council, we are really just a technology user group. We don't have any, we are not a legal entity. We organize all the events for free. There is no income. So we really rely on somebody to provide us with a venue, provide the catering for the day. And it is a substantial cost. So we really appreciate it. And I really want to say big thanks to Meta for hosting us today. I don't see a Nick, but I think he's somewhere, uh, somewhere hiding. He's somewhere at the back, and I can't see him. Anyway, so because this opening is uh, really kind of a, just a very short, uh, short time, I want to bring to your attention just where we are in the UK. And uh, you might be surprised that the number is not really as high as you'd hope, because last year, about a year ago, we were at 43%. So within a year, we have gone up only about a 1%, which tells us like the year before uh, in 2021 to 2022, the increase was about 10% of the user traffic in the UK on IPv6. Well, we could attribute this to the altnets, which are really busy deploying uh, networks, laying fiber in the ground uh, all over the UK and also deploying IPv6 simply because there is no more V4. The problem is, right, uh, there is only so much growth that we can get from there. And what we need now is the other large ISPs like Virgin Media and TalkTalk to really catch up and start deploying IPv6. So it's possible that we will not see much movement in, uh, in the adoption rate in the UK until one of these two is going to move. Or they're obviously like large uh, guys like Vodafone and the large mobile providers. So that's, that's where we are. You can see we are kind of on par with the APNIC measurements as well. So just to demonstrate what Apnik sees, you can see that we had, a, we had actually a peak in February this year in 2023. We actually, from Apnik perspective, the user traffic reached about 47%. But since then, it's kind of stagnating around 45% and it's not really changing much. So until we see more deployments with the large ISPs, we'll probably not see this changing significantly. However, we are on par with the global deployment, what, uh, what Google sees, and um, there is also some stagnation. 45% line was crossed, I think, in September this year, so that's already significant, but the, uh, the rate of adoption currently is slowing down a little bit. Nevertheless, we are deploying and there's going to be more uh, in the future, I'm sure. For those who are new or maybe you already forgot what all the resources we offer to our attendees, but also people who joined our LinkedIn group, it's also available on our website. 
All the presentations since the Council started in 2014 are available for free. I am afraid that not all the videos from 2014 are working because they are not stored on our YouTube channel, they are stored elsewhere. So I've noticed that some of these early videos you can get like first few minutes and you know, they are almost 10 years old, so, so that's fine. Not everybody has to store the full, uh, full presentations. But uh, since 2017 we, we are um, providing our videos through our YouTube channel so you can go and check them out. Uh, we've got actually lots of very interesting material. Uh, people from all over the world watch uh, our events, uh, the presentations that people give at our events. So it's definitely uh, worth uh, looking at and uh, learning something from the previous events. What we did in this year, we had a very big event. Uh, first time, well, we have done enterprise and IPv6 workshop because that's the general uh, feeling in the industry and I'm sure lots of you who work in enterprises will confirm that, that compared to ISPs, enterprises are lagging behind. And sometimes it's not easy to find all the information that people need, so we decided to organize a workshop where the most important parts of v6 deployment from IPv6, uh, from enterprise perspective, were kind of in one place. So from the UK IPv6 Council point of view, that's where you find the most recent uh, materials when it comes to enterprise deployment and what, uh, what can be considered while you are working on it. For the future, we probably next year uh, we will not organize a big workshop because it is a lot of work, lots of speakers that we need to get um, to come to London. But we will probably have a smaller discussion roundtable because that's always very interesting. About 20 people, and uh, you know, people can openly talk about the various problems they have been seen with V6, and it's. It's always very interesting and we learn a lot. And hopefully in a year's time, we will meet somewhere in London for another annual meeting.